if you've just come across part two of what on earth is heaven that's great but you might want to go back to part one which is on the earlier episode it's a two-part episode because it's so big and meaty we couldn't do it all in a wanna so go check that out Yeah, and that's different again, isn't it, to a lot of how we have maybe heard about heaven or had heaven taught to us over the years. I mean, for many, there is a perception that, you know, heaven is in outer space. And you talk about that yeah. a bit in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I talk about, yeah, I mean, it, um, I saw this poster when I went to a, a, an exhibition, actually, at the British Museum of, of Artifacts of Religion of of uh, Yuri Gagarin, you know, in 1961, he was the first, the Russian first cosmonaut into space. And, and famously he said, although he probably didn't actually say it, I think uh, Khrushchev put the words <laughs> into his mouth. He yeah. said, and it says on the poster, you know, God is not here. So I'd been yeah. up into heaven and he's, and he's supposed to have said, I looked and looked and looked, but God <laughs> is not here. But I, I think very few people expected him to find God up there. Mm. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, we often see the writers of the Bible as being naive, but actually I don't think they would have expected him to find God up there because, mm. the, you know, the, 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 the Jewish writers of the Bible knew very clearly that God is not within his creation. You know, he is outside mm. of his creation. He created, that says in Genesis, the heavens and the earth. Yeah. You know, so the entire universe is part of his creation. So, you know, you're not going to find him at some location either just just beyond the atmosphere or even beyond the furthest galaxy you know he, yeah. he is he is bigger than the whole creation and and um you know the right the bible writers knew that very clearly um and but of course then it's you know it does leave this question of where is heaven and i was i was very glad that one of the people i asked to um, read my book and who very kindly did a commendation is a professor of astrophysics and uh, at, a, at an American university. And he told me, you know, I do these classes on astrophysics and I always get asked, well, where is heaven? You know, where is God? <laughs> and um, I might, and, you know, he was very pleased to in a sense read the book. And I mean, I'm sure he, you know, has his um, answers to that question too already and thought about it a lot. But this idea that, that heaven isn't a, isn't a, you know, a location within the dimensions of, our universe which is the dimensions of space and time you know we are created to live in those dimensions but actually reality is a lot bigger than that and you know astrophysicists and other other you know physicists will tell you there's you know now they know i don't know 12 dimensions or, or 15 you know it's the numbers increasing and I, I think it really helps us conceptually to think of heaven as it this that is it's like a dimension of reality where god's will is done and I use in the book this picture of, um, of a place called Flatland. So if you imagine Flatland is a two-dimensional world where, mm. so it's like a flat piece of paper, just, just totally, it's just got, got length and, and width, but mm. no depth. And, and that's what the earth is in, in some ways. Um, and if you live in Flatland, you don't know anything else. But if you introduce now a third dimension, you actually see that that, flat piece of paper mm. or a square as it were is, is actually part of a cube but the cube is immensely bigger than mm. the square in fact you could fit the square almost an infinite number of times into the cube and 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 i think that's what it, what it is like when the dimension of heaven comes to join the earth which is which is what actually god is doing in history you, can, you know uh, you see that in revelation god's bringing heaven and earth together is it's, it's like a two-dimensional world becoming three-dimensional. And what that does is it adds depth and meaning and glory. Uh, glory means weightiness. Uh, in the Hebrew, it means weightiness. And, mm. and I think when we just live our lives in earth, just in purely earthly ways, I think this is what the existentialists, you know, philosophers encountered. Life becomes meaningless. You know, and weightless. Uh, Milan Kundera's famous book, you know, the unbearable lightness of being. Mm. You know, that's the title, uh, the unbearable lightness of being. If we're yeah. just these creatures who are here by accident, 
in in this you know in this world and there's no connections really it's all chance and just time and molecules then there is an unbearable lightness of being but if there is more to reality and like this this third dimension coming uh, heaven coming to earth actually what heaven does is is it makes connections of meaning and purpose and depth and our lives suddenly become weighty you know what we do matters yeah whether you ruin the earth or whether you care for it how you treat mm. your neighbor you know they they these are eternal realities that that add a, a you know a weightiness and a meaning to our lives in in a, in a yeah in, in a way that is wonderful all the dots begin to join up <laughs> and um you know our lives become i was reading a book called a seamless life mm. you know our life becomes integrated holes and meaningful and our actions become meaningful yeah so taking that a bit deeper in terms of some of the theological sort of biblical themes and thread that you take through the book mm. and you you mm -hmm. go into this in a bit more depth regarding um yeah i suppose what i found really helpful is uh, and maybe a more more of a visual learner like these sort of pictures mm. of the door mm. and the temple and how they run yeah. through scripture and yeah i guess that if we've got a view that heaven is basically we get on a rocket ship and we we, we get zapped <laughs> out of here and we go to mm. this place we're not quite sure what it is as you said mm. earlier you might think it's a bit boring because you're not sure if you've got a body and what have you all the things that we've discussed mm. But I think what was really helpful for me is just this, because it, because it's not there, it hasn't been as widely taught um, in the church in terms of like, okay, running through the Bible, we've got these mm. images of the door, the temple, and, and how they relate to understanding the kingdom of God and heaven coming to earth. And as you say, these yeah. dimensions yeah. coming together. Could you, could you just maybe unpack that? a bit more because yeah. i know you're going to it in quite yeah. a bit of depth but i think it's really yeah, yeah 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 it's really kind of what i do in this center bit of the book is really what you call a biblical theology when you have heaven and earth and yeah. so i see that that you know the bible starts with this meeting place of heaven and earth which is the garden of eden so it's it's the place where god's will is done on earth yeah. and humans are the creatures who carry out his will but, but when humanity rebels and rejects God's will, then heaven and earth are separated. Mm. And, and, so and that's I think like, it's, sorry, just to stop there. So yeah. the image in Genesis where they're banished from the garden, is that yeah, kind of what you yeah, yeah, yeah. And the flaming, the, you know, the angel with the flaming sword is set yeah. there quite clearly, you know, um, saying that there isn't a way back. Mm. And, and the reason that, you know, because if you think of heaven as being the dimension of reality where God's will is done, and then that humans are the ones who are going to do God's will on earth, when mm. they reject God's will, they mm. reject heaven, really. Yeah. And they become, if you like, or we become purely earthly beings. Mm. Um, and actually, we were made to live in heaven on earth. Yeah. You know, in heaven on earth but yeah. but instead we just become these purely earthly beings and and all the things that god gave us become misused um so that for example uh, you think of the cain and abel story where cain kills his brother abel you know he probably killed him with a spade or something yeah. like that may have done you know or or simple axe tool and yeah. they would probably made that tool to help them farm mm. you know and, and and that was part of god's will that actually we could invent and create technologies like tools to help us do things but suddenly he turns this tool into a weapon to kill somebody mm. and that's that's what happens when we leave the will of god we, we begin to misuse all the good things he's given us mm. um uh, in ways that that for our own power but but the story then of the bible isn't and this is actually the story of most other religions is how do we find a way to get back to god in heaven but the story of the Bible is exactly the reverse. It's a story of how God opens doors so that his presence can come back to earth. Mm. And, you know, you, you, you see this immediately when Adam and Eve have, um, you know, rebelled against God and they're hiding in the garden. It's not them who then go looking for God, but it's God who comes to find them. Mm. And that's just the pattern you see all the way through scripture. So, for example, you know, Jacob later on, he's, 
you know, the, I don't know, great, 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 whatever it is, grand, grandson of Adam and Eve. He's on the run because he's uh, deceived his brother and his brother's murderous towards him. And he's on the run and he's sleeping in the wilderness. He has this dream of this ladder going between heaven and earth or stairway. And, you know, you, you could say, I, I think Led Zeppelin called it stairway to heaven. <laughs> but actually, I, I, I think it should be called a stairway from heaven. Because when Jacob wakes from the dream, he doesn't say, oh, God has provided me a way to escape. Mm. He wakes in the dream and he says, oh, this is where God is present on earth. Mm. And it's like, you know, and I saw that. I suddenly thought, oh, that's what it's about. And so God is always opening these doorways where he is present on earth. Um, mm. the burning bush, the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. And then most fully in the Old Testament, he actually gives a permanent place where he's present on earth, which is the tabernacle in the temple. Mm. And, and the thing that separates that from the rest of the earth is, um, you know, is obviously human sin and rebellion and, and the reality of that. So these, I, I call it in the book, these, these places that, you know, these touching places of heaven and earth are sort of new Edens, new mm. beginnings where actually, the power of God and the power of heaven can begin to flow out to transform and heal a broken earth. And in the Old Testament, you see how actually all of these eventually fail because human beings keep turning mm. away from God. And so ultimately, God creates a new touching place of heaven and earth in, in his very self. And, mm. and that's who Jesus is. You know, he is uh, fully God and fully human. And so he creates, if you like, a new garden of Eden, but in his very self, he is, yeah. Paul calls him the heavenly man. And the mission of Jesus is to be the starting point of a new creation, a renewed creation where heaven can begin to transform the earth. And you see this actually at Jesus' baptism, because very deliberately in the Gospels, when Jesus is baptized, there's the spirit hovering over the water yeah and and at jesus's baptism and that's very deliberately the same picture as the first creation in genesis mm. so the bible writers say what is happening here is a, a new that creation is being renewed and it's being renewed by this man from heaven yeah. um, and and the power of heaven is going to flow out ultimately through his death and resurrection so it's it's a theme that runs all the way through and you know you you can follow it through again the giving of the holy spirit is from heaven to earth and then when jesus comes again it will be from heaven to earth to bring heaven with him to earth mm. so that, that's just a very quick potted yeah i don't know if you, <laughs> you you might want to pick out other things but that's like a kind of you know the, the, the bible doesn't run i say from creation to heaven it runs from creation to new creation yeah yeah and i think i think that's that makes sense of talking about the kingdom of god because i mean you, you mentioned the beatitudes there but mm. but if we're just here and we're waiting around because we've somehow landed on the wrong planet it doesn't make any sense of like what the kingdom of god is or what it looks yeah. like neither yeah. does it make any sense of jesus being a temple but also us being you know a temple where the holy spirit it dwells and yeah. surely then is it not the case that we are representing, you can argue, part of heaven by being on those earth, who yeah. are in Christ? Yeah, on earth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, no, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, the, the, in a way, all these pictures, like the temple is where God is present on earth, but it's, it's a picture of Jesus. You know, yeah, really, that's what the temple is. It's, it's all about pointing us to Jesus. Mm. And then um, Jesus says, you know, my body is the temple that will be destroyed and raised yeah. again in three days. And, and then he says, uh, Paul tells us that, that actually what happens is that if you become a Christian, you become a meeting place of heaven on earth because mm. of heaven and earth, because the spirit of God comes from heaven to live in you on earth. Mm. And you become a citizen of heaven, but a citizen of heaven on earth. Yeah. And, and you're actually, you know, the Bible says this, uh, Paul says this in his letters, you are a temple. Mm. That, that you are where God is present on earth. That, that's a strange thing to say. But if you're a Christian, you are yeah. where heaven is present on earth and where the power of heaven can flow out 
Mm. And I, I talk about the big, I pick up Abra, um, Abraham Kuyper's idea of, you know, that, that heaven can flow out through you to your square inch of the earth. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't save the whole world. And yeah, Jesus has yeah. done that and, and will finally do it when he comes again. But, but you can make a difference in your square inch yeah um and 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 of course and the other thing jesus says is you know where two or three are gathered together there i am also so mm. there's a particular way in which the church is the meeting place of heaven on earth and and the place mm. through which um the power of god can flow out to renew the earth and of course to do that then we have to really sort of say well you know we have to really listen to the holy spirit and what he's doing and trust mm. his power which is where I, I finish the book at the end rather than you know pursuing our own plans for the kingdom of heaven on earth but but really mm. be a part mm. of what god is doing but that, that yeah you're yeah. right that's very much the picture we you know we are these touching places of heaven on earth and i think as you were saying that in terms of the local church there's almost a, a scale of thinking about those things that maybe some people are not thinking about so much the kingdom of um, heaven on earth and other people are all about the kingdom so we're going to take the world for the kingdom yeah uh, and it's all yeah. about being excited and yeah. getting hyper on that and it's not about having an inch it's about trying to take loads yeah. and loads of sort of space but actually what i like about what you said about that about having an inch is that it reminds me of um what schaefer says in terms of um you know doing the lord's work in the lord's way, lord's way and, yeah and, and yeah. about following and that is about following yeah. the spirit and and, yeah. and i find that so helpful as yeah. a local pastor yeah. because i can have ideas and other people can have yeah. ideas and you can have a five-year plan or a 10-year plan or mm. come up with all kinds of different views on things but it seems to me like the humbling thing about understanding the kingdom of heaven on earth as he calls us to that is mm. that how that comes about is through a work of the spirit in my life being a temple of the holy spirit yeah but also my total dependency upon him so actually yeah, yeah. The, the older i've got the more i realize that i'm weak and i need the lord's help but yeah. i think that's it's a painful thing to one's ego but it's i think it's a mm. helpful thing in terms of us showing hopefully people what the kingdom of heaven looks like yeah 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 and, th and this really relates back to you know a conversation earlier on where you, we were talking about you know that there's no secular sacred divide you know all yeah. of life is spiritual yeah and so um you know our god wants to transform our square inch and that square inch may be maybe you're a musician you know like like mm. you are clive you know and maybe you can you know the power of heaven i don't mean in cheesy kind of christian ways but just the, <laughs> the power of heaven can flow out through your music you know maybe you're a, you're a mother maybe you're a you know car park ticket for uh, <laughs> ticking you know yeah. car to car park a blue meanie yeah. Um, yeah blue meanie <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and you know maybe um but you know maybe you're an astrophysicist maybe you work in the army or maybe you are mm. um yeah um you know you tidy the street you pick up litter or whatever it is mm. you know how can we bring this dynamic power of heaven or, or be a part of what it's doing mm. in, in our lives in all of our lives you know not 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 in sort of special spiritual things as, as some people call it, you know church and bible study but but all of life mm. um you know, I, I think sometimes we confuse things like church, Bible study, you know, um, prayer with the spiritual life. I often say to people, those are the things which feed the spiritual life. But in, in one way, you begin to live the spiritual life when you walk out of church mm. on a Sunday and back into the world. <laughs> and then you begin to live that out. And hopefully the mm. things that you've learned and thought about and, and the people you've engaged with and conversations you've had will have fed you mm. and will have um you know and, and the holy spirit will be at work amongst you as you yeah. do that but it's when you when you leave the church you know then and you bring it into all of your life and all of everyday life yeah you know, in, a, in that way um I, I, that's so. really encouraging and a really good picture i think to have that, and that, that's really put some light bulbs on for me because i often think about 
spiritual growth there's a desire for spiritual growth in my life and mm. other people's lives but what i must be careful of is that's not a reduction review of spiritual growth i like the idea of yeah. feeding your spiritual life yeah. Um, yeah so that actually when we come to meditate on the word when we come to pray we're mm. feeding our spiritual life and so you can go and be a builder in the week and you can go and yeah. care for your children yeah. and i think that's a really helpful yeah. picture yeah yeah, and, 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 you know, be fed so that you have something to give and to see those bits of your life in a different way that they could mm. be somehow, you know, transformed. I think that's what Jesus talks about, on you know, in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, he talks about, well, you know, if someone hits you on the cheek, you know, you can hit them back. Yeah. And um, I, I've, I've known sometimes uh, I, I once had a student who did that to someone and actually I said that was the right thing to do in that instance because he, <laughs> he was protecting some women who were being you know abused by this person yeah uh, but actually you know Jesus said something like and, and I don't think he's setting up a rule or a law here but he's saying mm. you know if you let the kingdom of heaven into your life it could mean not taking revenge on somebody Mm. but just allowing that space for something else to happen or if somebody makes you do something you know um you can choose yourself to go the extra mile yeah. and show that person special grace because something else you know it's, then you're allowing this different dynamic because the world works on the dynamic of you know revenge and tit for tat and mm. you get what you deserve and you give what you get and all that but it is talking about a different dynamic that we can bring into our lives. And, um, and of course, you know, the Holy Spirit, you, you mentioned the Lord's work in the Lord's way. I'm, I'm actually just writing a, a lecture, a talk on that. I'm giving it in two weeks time at Brie, mm. and uh, you can join live. I'm sure you're, you know, on yeah. the, um, if you go to the English Brie website, yeah. um, two, two Fridays time. But um, I think um, he, he says this because I was just looking at this thought, Francis Schaeffer, who wrote the, this little essay, The Lord's Work in the Lord's Way. He says, because the world is hard, confronting it without God's power is an overwhelming prospect. Mm. So we have to confront the world with the Lord's power. And, and he says, actually, that power is humility. Mm. Actually saying often we don't know what to do. Mm. Uh, so please show us. And even if I didn't know what to do, I probably don't want to do it. So please help me. <laughs> yes. Know? And yes. Um, my mind is so limited. So please, you know, help yeah. me to see and, 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 and open my mind to po the possibilities of heaven on earth. Yeah. And, um, and then so he says it means humility. And then also often waiting, mm -hmm. waiting for the Lord to really show us what to do and prayerfully and he says you know wait, waiting is never wasted if we're really yeah. seeking the lord's will and i you know I've, I've had some i mean i i'll just share a little something with you, you know recent mm. i mean i um you know obviously many all our listeners your listeners are probably aware of you know the black lives matter movement and and the protests that kicked off with um george george floyd you know being being yeah. killed by the policeman in america and I was really disturbed by that at the time. Um, and, um, you know, the, the terrible thing of this man being killed by, by the police and wanting to write something or do something and not knowing how or, or what to do, mm. or, you know, even being a, you know, a white middle-class person, if I should, could say anything or should say anything, I don't know, you know, that, that into that situation that, that, you know, without saying the wrong thing or whatever, I don't know, or, you know or, or just um you know unconscious prejudices i, I had in what i was going to say so I, I i made it a subject of prayer to pray that the lord would you know help and show me and lead me and that was say nine months ago now and just recently i've had two different people who are quite involved in racial justice and reconciliation get in contact and um i set up a you know we had a phone call and I just said, I, I just want to learn and hear from you, you know, and think about what should be my response in this kind of setting in this kind of world and what's going on. And that started off, you know, reading and they gave me some things to read and think about. But I see those, you know, the Lord sort of just, you know, I was waiting and praying and saying, I, I don't really know what to do. But I, I saw that as an answer, even though it's nine months later. Mm. And I think 
you know, the Schaefer points out in this essay, The Lord's Work, The Lord's Way, how when God led the people through the desert, they had to, um, you know, when, 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 the, when the light, the fire and the, you know, uh, the, the pillar of fire stopped, they stopped. And when it went, they went. And if it stopped, no matter how long it stopped, they stopped. Mm. You know, and they didn't go on until it, it, it led them on. So I think there's a great, you know, sense of, um, yeah, that, that actually really trusting if God is there, if heaven is present on earth and God is here amongst us by his spirit, then we can trust him to lead mm. us and to show the way sometimes to close the door, you know, or divert us. And we've got to mm. be open to that. And, you know, that many people have this idea. We, we, we talked about it before the interview, didn't we, about them? Um, you know, I think I'm going to build the kingdom of God and I'm going to kick down all these doors and, you know, everything. Da, 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 and, you know, and, and we use all the world's techniques and systems and programs to, to make things happen for the church. Instead, you know, actually, I think, no, God's doing something. And the question is, can we become a part of what he's doing? Mm. Not is he going to become a part of what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, Do absolutely. You know that, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And and i think that really i think you're right waiting and being prayerful and being willing to be led by the spirit you know requires faith and at times requires um a lot of waiting and but sometimes some risks you know but i think that's the whole point of faith isn't it like so if if you're just like well i read this really good book about 10 ways to be a better church or five ways to be yeah. a better christian and i'll mm. just prescriptively mm. do those 10 or five things mm. then mm. is it actually exercising faith you know and yeah. and i think you're right with your example you know of of those in the wilderness because so much of our life i think is about um and i think that, i think that I, that's what i've been learning more that mm. the mm. dependency upon god is waiting often and yeah. looking at his timing rather than instant you know right I've yeah. got the answer, you know. Here we go, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's an arrogance, isn't there, amongst us often, you know, and I'm this way too, is, oh, yeah, I can do that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm ready to do that or I'm the right person to do it. Or, you know, you, you think of Moses spending, you know, 40 years as a shepherd yeah. or, you know, um, God preparing him for something. And um, yeah. so I, th- I think there is, and then, but you're right, there is a courage and a risk when God shows you what to do. Mm. you know and and to, to go out and do it and take a risk and you know maybe that yeah, yeah maybe the blue meanie guy was um <laughs> you know when he put the the um, plants in the office the house plants you know people might have laughed at him or something or yeah you know and thought oh what a softy doing that so so we've we've um we've been weaving away through what it kind of looks like in terms of actually sort of uh, understanding the kingdom of god and that's been really helpful and then to sort of weave back onto the the other path as it were i, I combine two questions for you is is okay if we're not going up in a rocket to spiritualized heaven yeah and we know christ as our savior firstly where where do we live for eternity we've been touching on that yeah, uh, yeah. and secondly what what will we be doing for eternity if we won't be on a fluffy cloud yeah. uh, playing a harp yeah yeah, well, yeah, the, the Bible is quite clear where we will be for eternity. Revelation 21, we will be in an, a new heaven and a new earth, or um, 2 Peter 3, even where he talks about this, you know, cataclysmic kind of, of events that sort of happen when Jesus comes again, actually he says, you know, we are waiting the new heaven, the new earth, or mm. Romans 8, uh, you know, the whole creation is groaning to be liberated into the freedom of the sons of God, mm. the children of God. So, yeah, we will be in a renewed creation and a combined creation. You know, Jesus was the first, in a sense, you know, the first fruits of that. He was the heavenly man, the combination of heaven and earth. Mm. And when you become a Christian, you are the next fruits of that because Mm. you then become a combination of heaven and earth. And then when Jesus comes again to earth, he will bring heaven with him into this um yeah this combined reality there's a beautiful hymn charles wesley hymn it's called let heaven and earth combine yeah that that's that's you know that uh, that's that's what the picture we get in revelation so 
we will be for eternity in a new creation, a new heaven, a new earth, this combined, like, you know, using the terms earlier, three dimensional reality. Yeah. And we will have bodies. That, that's what the Bible tells us. You know, Jesus's resurrection clearly shows that he had a body, a physical body, and, mm. and we will also. And that's why in the Apostles' Creed, if you say, do still say that in your church, one of the clauses is, I believe in the resurrection of the body, you know, not the resurrection of the soul and spirit, yeah. but the resurrection of the body. Um, so obviously there's the question which I deal with, I've got a chapter in the book, what then happens when we die you know, between death and between Jesus coming again. And uh, <laughs> so that you want to read the book, at least I won't tell you what's in one <laughs> yes, chapter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so, we'll but, cover all bases. Yeah. So, but um, <laughs> no. I mean, but but, um, but actually the final destiny is this combination of heaven and earth and this renewed restored creation and god is there you know like 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 you know jesus he says god with us emmanuel so god is there and i think what we will be doing there is um one of the things i would say is in a sense it's not so much what we will be doing but what it will be like is it will be joy it will be yeah. this inc it, I, th I think we are made for joy we're created for joy um for the for the joy of relationships and the joy of being and the joy of doing and and that's what this new creation will be it will be the joy of relationships of being right there with god mm. you know face to face with jesus um and if god is love john says god is love then mm -hmm. we are welcomed right into the heart of the relationship of the trinity which is love as mm -hmm. if we were their child which which we are we're adopted as their children so so we're welcomed into the heart of love and mm -hmm. that is just joy and and, mm -hmm. and and being filled with joy and then sharing that joy with others and then we will be there with with other people because we will you know um all those people who've trusted in christ and and uh, his gift mm. of this future which he, he offers to everyone freely mm. you know th there will be the joy of being with each other you will be yourself you'll be clive i'll know mm. clive and i'll say oh, no. I, I never <laughs> knew genius. that you were so such an amazing human being you know because we're actually mm. just broken um you know distorted images of the glory that god created us to have mm. so it will be it will be joy um mm. of being with one another and then i also think it will be the joy of continuing to do what god created us to do which is to care for his creation mm. actually why you know i don't think that the new creation if you think of the first creation it wasn't a static creation it was dynamic it was growing and we mm. were there to think and understand and develop yeah and create and i think the new creation will be the same why why not this continuous unfolding glory as we mm. you know live out what it means to be made in the image of god and we continue to create and discover and invent and relate so yeah i, th I think that's that's what it will be like and yeah my, my of... wife so oh, I was just, sorry yeah, I was gonna say when my wife read the book because i i only shared little bits of it w yeah. with her at various times but she said it's just amazing she said i i um it's almost too good to be true what god promises us and yet it is true you know mm -hmm. so sorry clive i interrupted you no no um like uh, when uh, my children were growing up and they would ask about heaven i would often describe it through um the pictures of, of um C.S. Lewis is, um, you know, the Lion, the Witch, yeah. and the Wardrobe, and yeah. going yeah. through the yeah. door, and like, so it's like what we know, only better, and, yeah. but yeah. Uh, but also like the expanse of Narnia. So yeah. um, you, sp you talk about how we have a sort of like an inch here, but yeah. I kind of have this imagination mm. that if mm. we start in a garden that, and you go over the the hill and then you see a river and then you see trees and then you yeah, see mountains yeah. and then all this all this space to be cared for to be a steward yeah. of, rather than like just this pokey little garden with yeah. a bird yeah. feeder and that's it you know it's 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 just sort of it's it's caring for 
um, his creation in, in the way that I think C.S. Lewis brilliantly portrays in the, in the Narnia mm. books. Yeah, and, yeah and particularly in the last books. battle. It's wonderful, isn't it? The last chapter, the last battle. And, yeah. and he says um, how, yeah, that, like everything that matters in this world is there, only more its real self. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's so. That's, that's just wonderful. And then, and then the final words that he said, you know, the, the term is over, the holidays have begun. This is the <laughs> this is the morning, yeah. and they now entered the great story, of which you know this life was just the beginning and the title page, mm. and in which each chapter is better than the one before. Yeah, you know, and that's his, and I I think that captures it beautifully. Mm. Yeah. Now that, and, and that, that is that sense of anticipation and something to look forward to, because I think that if you have a reduced view of one, what it means to be human, what, what, one, what, uh, sorry, two, what the earth is and three, what heaven is, then it's almost a bit like, oh, flip, you know, um, got another five years older, or is this all there is, you know, or the mm. clock's going rather than, as you say, I like that idea of, you know, this is just a title page. There's yeah, way more yeah. to come. And that is the hope of the Christian, surely. I mean, I became very aware of that at the beginning of this, this pandemic that we entered into mm -hmm. that, okay, if this is all there is, like, let's just imagine this pandemic took off and loads of people, I know a lot of people have mm -hmm. died in the world, but mm -hmm. let's just say like three quarters of the planet was getting wiped out. You know, it's, mm -hmm. where's the hope that we have, you know, and what does the hope look like? Mm -hmm. And I think this is where, you know, your what you're talking about, what your book is, is really relevant because, how can I share the hope that I have in Christ if I don't even know what that hope yeah, looks like? Yeah. You know, I think it has implications yeah. for mission in that regard. Yeah, and if it's yeah, if we have this you know pink clouds and fat babies, it seems such an <laughs> anemic hope. But yeah, I love I love I was reading I don't know if it was an original quote but Dane Dane Alton's book Gentle and Lowly recently, yeah. and he and he says something at the end. He said he says if you're not a Christian, then this life is as good as it gets <laughs> and if you are a Chris, christian then this life is as bad as it gets <laughs> because there's you know there, there's so much better to come but i think the very important thing and I, I i would stress this is really what my book in a way is all about um because actually it's not in some ways it's not really a book about heaven it's actually a book about the earth and yeah. being on earth which is why yeah. i called it what on earth is heaven yeah but um i, th I think the crucial thing is also because heaven is already present here on earth there's a continuity between you know the now and the not yet it's mm. not like well we're just waiting to go to this place and then we're you know it's yeah. actually no you know the kingdom of heaven is here as mm. jesus said and we can participate in it yeah. and the things that we do that are part of the kingdom of heaven i i, I believe this this very profoundly and I, I think paul i would say you know talks about this when he says the end of uh, i think it's 1 corinthians 15 is it or oh, no hang on i'd have to get the rest anyway he says nothing you do in the lord is done in vain mm -hmm. and i think that's true i would say nothing that you do that is a part of the kingdom of heaven is done in vain mm -hmm. even if someone else reverses it or if it's misunderstood or even if nobody sees it which the bible mm -hmm. talks about a lot it is already a part of the new creation it is a part and it will be a part of um yeah. you know of, of the unveiling of things when heaven and earth are combined and i i quoted in the book but i love that bit from c.s lewis's the great divorce where I, I don't know if you know this this bit where um it's it's this story of lewis who is um led by george Macdonald to in a vision of of hell and then of heaven mm. and when he comes to heaven he sees this procession going on and there's this lady this beautiful lady and all these animals and children kind of singing her praises and following her and he turns to george Macdonald and he, he says you know is this and he, he means is it the virgin mary you know it's, and and then the George McDonald's, who's showing him around heaven and hell, says, no, it's it's Sarah Smith from Gold is Green. <laughs> you know, and um, and, the, you know, Gold, Sarah Smith is the most ordinary, boring name and Gold is Green. I, I lived there for a year when I was a medical student. It's one of the most boring suburbs of London, 1950, <laughs> you know, really yeah. dull suburb. Um, and um, <laughs> but that's Lewis's point is mm. in one sense, this is just a, a completely ordinary woman mm. who 
she never married and she lived her whole life in Golders Green. But then he goes on to talk about how, uh, you know, every child in the neighborhood, she sort of took them into her care and into mm. her love um, and all the animals that were present, you know, she, she showed them the love of God. Uh, mm. You know, she loved those things. She, yeah. and, and they are, because she's loved them, they are part of the glory of, of heaven, of, of the new creation. And um, so I, I, I think that's just a wonderful picture because, you know, most of us are pretty ordinary, mm. really. You know, I, I often say, we're, you know, we're not Gandalfs and Aragorns. <laughs> we're hobbits. You know? <laughs> we're plodders. Yeah. Uh, you, know, um, you know, we plod on faithfully doing things. And yet, actually, that's what, you know, what God calls us to do just in the ordinary every day yeah in the power of the holy spirit and in god's wisdom to see how we can just transform our square inch and that is a part of eternity already yeah so there's this deep continuity you know and you're um tolkien picks that up in in his story doesn't he leaf by niggle you know the um i don't know if you know that that short about this no, man who's painting a painting all his life but mm. sort of when he gets to the new creation he actually sees the glory of what he's done and it's actually become a He's painting a tree actually it becomes this it's this real tree mm. there and i think that that's an image for the things that we do in this life that really are a part of god's will in the simple ordinary are a part of eternity yeah and, um, so, so lastly what what are you looking forward yeah. to about the new creation um yeah i have a serious answer and some, some <laughs> not so serious answers but one of them is um Actually, in Dane Orton's book, again, um, Gentle and Lowly, I, um, he, he says this, um, um, Christ has promised us that all the haunted brokenness that infects everything, every relationship, every conversation, every family, every email, every awakening to consciousness in the morning, every job, every vacation, everything will one day be rewound and reversed. And I, I'm looking forward to that because I, I, I must admit, you know, I'm one of those people, sometimes I wake in the middle of the night and I'm haunted by the brokenness that infects everything. And I often think, why did I say that to that person or send that silly email? Or <laughs> why did I say that to Clive <laughs> or something? That was ridiculous or whatever it is, you know. And I, I think, I, you know, and I'm looking forward partly to that relief actually of not living in a world of haunted brokenness mm. but even seeing those things you know maybe even this podcast as well is a part of he says everything all of that will one day be rewound and reversed yeah um and I, i'm you know i'm longing mm. for that the, the the freedom relief of that and um mm. you know just as I, I it's a funny thing i don't know if you get this Clive, but as i become older i become more aware of my brokenness and mm. you know my tendency to all kinds of you know behaviors which hurt other people so to be relieved of that i suppose that's a negative thing mm. um but it's also a wonderful positive to be in yeah the freedom of the children of, of god as yeah Paul says. I, I mean i i don't know if it's a i suppose it's a negative thing i guess brokenness is part of our reality isn't it and yeah, yeah. um and i think that if we're aware of that which is broken and mm. there is a mm. an acknowledgement of that i think we're in yeah. probably a better place than if we thought oh i'm yeah. all right jack <laughs> nothing wrong with Absolutely. me you know? so i think yeah, yeah. i think if it leads right. to if it leads to dependency upon god and mm. a, and a prayerfulness that's a great mm. thing if it leads to self-loathing mm. it's not a great thing but yeah and I, but i totally agree with you you know there will be no brokenness and actually it would be great yeah. to kind of not have that tension of you know doing and throwing in that I yeah think. i think you're right yeah. yeah 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 you're right yeah jesus says blessed are the poor in spirit isn't it so to be aware yeah. of your brokenness is actually yeah. a blessing because you can then do something about it um yeah and I, yeah my other th my other two things i had is <laughs> well i'd love to, I'd, I'd love to meet Tolkien <laughs> in the new creation <laughs> and sit under an oak tree with Tolkien and, and talk about the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings and just to thank him for, because it's probably my favourite book ever. And in fact, at the beginning of lockdown last yeah. year, 
I, d- I just went back and reread the Lord of the Rings and I recently yeah. this year just reread the Silmarillion and um mm. yeah it's just an amazing book which has yeah. meant so much to me and, and yeah yeah so and, I, you, I and you amazingly you said in the book that you read it at eight years old or something I did <laughs> yeah it's amazing. probably it's, I know. <laughs> it took me a year and I don't know if I understood most of it but um yeah, I, I probably read it every two years, I think now or something. And yeah. um, I, it's just one of those books where you see new things mm. every time you read it. And, yeah, um, well, that's great. Uh, and, you know, I think it, it's, it's a very interesting because it's not actually an adventure into fantasy. It's, mm. it's taking you deeper into reality because it's mm. deeply about, you know, good and evil and about courage and betrayal mm. and... Um, you know all the things we experience and it's about hope yeah. and it's about um yeah and there is you know there is yeah this deep sense of the brokenness of things but also the hope mm. so i'd love to meet tolkien and say thank you and yeah. and then i have one other thing i'd love to do which is i can't sing very well and i'm not saying that heaven is going to be a place where we you know <laughs> singing all the time but i would i would love to learn to sing well so um <laughs> <laughs> maybe well maybe could have a tr- I, I would just be very pleased if when i open my now- mouth the note that i want to sing actually <laughs> does come out of my mouth <laughs> yes you'd be pitch perfect yeah well maybe i'll be able to it's funny in, in a similar note maybe i'll be able to become more practical i'm not brilliant at diy so maybe <laughs> yeah. i'll be able to construct like wardrobes and things like that because <laughs> that's not my bag <laughs> well maybe you know i think that's one of the things about the new creation is i i I argue in the book, I don't think everything's going to be magic better, but, you know, yeah. maybe you can teach me to sing, Clive, mm. you know, and I can teach you to do wardrobes or something. No, but I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm serious in a sense, you know, yeah. actually there's such a joy in someone giving the gift that they have of something yeah. they know how to do and teaching yeah. it to you and you receive and there's a joy in giving mm. that knowledge isn't there and yeah. and i think that will be a part of the new creation well i mean maybe there's another podcast entirely involved <laughs> in this but actually maybe that's because i was going to say actually you know to what i don't know you'd necessarily have a personality transplant it's not or, no. or a gifting transplant because it's not like well yeah, you're involved think so. in music now now you're a, a, a builder you know i think you would <laughs> yeah. sort of like continue yeah. because isn't there something like core in terms of our soul yeah in terms of part of that integration Who we are god has created yeah. us as unique in that way mm. yeah so yeah. you know you're more you become more more gym as opposed to yeah the yeah right? yeah absolutely I, d- I don't think there is this kind of your yeah absolutely not you're turned into someone else you know yeah. you will be more yourself than you've ever been yeah. Yeah. and i i do yeah i do honestly think that that will be a tremendous joy of sharing yeah the things that you have and the things that you know and have learned and can do with other people i mean that's you know i'd love in this life i don't know if we'll ever get a chance but you know if i ever get a chance to travel up to edinburgh and you can yeah. teach me to sing or play the guitar or whatever <laughs> I, you know. I mean that would be a heavenly moment wouldn't it well maybe not for you listening to my singing <laughs> well it would be great if you could come to Edinburgh yeah I mean we, we have tried a couple of times haven't we for you to come up <laughs> yeah it would be yeah. wonderful if we could actually eat food in the same building and not be yeah. socially distanced yeah. and yeah uh, and I could um introduce you to some good coffees as well mm. maybe get you yeah. on that you know I mean, you can continue your tea um life of tea but but maybe you, you know, could explore the depths of coffee too yeah 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 no i'm definitely open to that yeah. <laughs> you're open to that good. i'm open to coffee yeah. yeah yeah good um so we're just going to sort of draw to a close now but it's been really helpful to chat through these different things and um you you have written this book and people can get hold of that but where can they get yeah. hold of it if they want to read more jim yeah, it's on. Um, it's published by IVP Intervarsity Press, so it's on their website, um, and then it's also on Amazon. And yeah. yeah, if you want to see more, I've got an Amazon author page which has got some videos of um, mm. other interviews and, and me reading the first chapter of the book. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's on Amazon, and um, 
what else to say about it? Yeah, I think that's probably yeah, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's maybe elsewhere online. Generally, most things yeah. are online, though. Aren't they? Yeah. Is there a Kindle yeah. version of it, or is it? There is a Kindle. You can get it on Kindle yeah. as well. Yeah, Kindle on version, both yeah. IVP and. Yeah. Um, and Although Amazon. I have to say, I really have gone back to reading. Uh, there was a, a flurry where I went on Kindle, but I like real books now because we yeah, spend so too. much time on screens. I think, and yeah. you can't scribble in electronic yeah. things. So. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's got a, it's got a, um, it, I, I had to say on, on the cover, I had to write to IVP and say, please, no pink fluffy clouds. And um, I think actually they've done a wonderful job with the, uh, with yeah. the cover of it, with no pink fluffy clouds. <laughs> You've got no heart that. players on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No fat babies with wings. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We um, have got a Little Breakfast Facebook page. So if people are watching this or equally, if you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, other platforms, uh, then we would love to hear from you. Um, and tell us where you're listening from. So one of the things that I know uh, Jim loves is people asking questions and interactions. So do I. Um, I don't want us to just become consumers of things. So um, please mm. you know, ask questions. Maybe you agree, disagree with what Jim said, what I've said. Uh, so please uh, comment on the Facebook page equally. There's a Twitter page. There's an Instagram page and there's all these pages that never existed years ago, but they're there now. So you can interact. There's no excuses wherever you are around the world. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you want to find out more about Jim's book equally, we'll put that on the Facebook page. We'll put some links right. to where you can find out more about that. And also Labrie, we can, we can put yeah. a link up to Labrie. Yeah. Put a link to, yeah, yeah we've got a website. Um, EnglishLibri.org or yeah. and Libri.org. And also we have, yeah, we do a Friday lecture, which is yeah. so if you like this kind of thing, we have a every Friday night a lecture that you can join by Zoom if you go to our website and with a QA afterwards. And yeah. yeah, people do have questions. I don't know if they come to Clive. I I, I do try to answer people's questions. So if <laughs> someone sends something through to you, I'd be happy to Yeah, respond. no, that'd be great. Um and I've yeah. got another idea actually as we've spoken is Either we could do another podcast or I'd be happy to connect with you guys at the Brie. Um, having watched the film Soul, it would be an interesting discussion on the back of this, okay. this, yeah. this conversation. So we can maybe chat about that offline yeah. and maybe see if there could be a, an interesting discussion on that. Mm. I'm sure uh, if you haven't seen it, when well, you will see it, it will raise lots of questions and Great. cultural well, observations. Yeah, so that'd be yeah. really good. Okay, thanks so much for joining us again, and uh, thanks for taking the time. And as I say, yeah, please uh, do get in touch with um, us, and we can pass things on to Jim. That would be great. And um, we will be back with another episode, and uh, we're trying to do this on a monthly basis. So again, um, join us for that one too. <laughs>